Welcome back, I'm Tara Lynn and this is Five Acres Honey Farm. This is a really exciting time of the year for many beekeepers and for many beekeeper friends and family uh, because it is the honey harvest time. Uh, here in uh, the Piedmont area of North Carolina, uh, typically the, the flow is over um, in June and uh, traditionally, uh, this is my fifth year beekeeping, uh, I have harvested honey 4th of July weekend. It's been a tradition in the years that I've been able to harvest honey. This is the earliest I've ever harvested. The flow ended uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, it's a really good time right now to get the honey off the hives. Uh, it's not a good time in respect to the heat. Uh, it is exceptionally hot this week, um, hotter than I really ever remember it being at this time of the year. Uh, we've got heat indexes well over 100 um, and multiple days of 99. Uh, Fahrenheit and 100 degrees this week. So I'm going to show you a few things that I'm doing uh, around the property for the bees in this heat, uh, both in the apiary and outside the apiary. And uh, there are tons of videos about extracting honey. Uh, so I'm not going to go into great detail about that because it's a fairly straightforward process. Use an extractor. Uh, I will share a few things that I've had to do uh, because the supers were just so heavy and I could not lift them up. And this was the first year where I wasn't able to lift them. Um, some of the frames have, I've even struggled just lifting the frames out. Um, not, you know, there's a lot of propolis around them and it, it sticks into the box a lot. But I'll share a few things here um, and then I'll, I'll share a few clips of um, pulling the honey supers and a, a little bit of the extraction process and some things that I've done um, that make it a little bit easier for me and uh, a little special uh, honey addition that, that I have going on too. So I pulled the truck up right up to the hives. That's what I really like about how I have it set up. And I did use the smoker right now. I have the fume board on and I pulled off the top box because I gave it to them like right after the flow is ending. So there's really nothing in it. Um, the fume board I let sit in the sun for a bit and um, I sprayed that with um, uh, the Be Quick, I think it's Be Quick. Um, it keeps them kind of away from it and it's very effective, but it needs to be like really hot and right in the sun. Uh, this little box has been making it easy for me to lift all the honey because it's um, a nuke size. So I move five frames into it and it makes it much better for me to be able to lift. The cardboard I use to prevent any honey spillage and to, to prevent the bees from kind of congregating in there. Um, but this is going really well. I just, I'll be extracting from the other tall one back there. This is one of my favorite parts. It's so lovely. It's amazing. And the smell, it's like cotton candy smell so fresh I can't like there's really no way to experience it other than you know extracting fresh honey before I share uh, a little bit of how I'm helping the hive stay cool I did mention um, in the intro that I have like a special edition that I'm working on and I'm intentionally only holding the bottle here because I'll I'll be um, announcing this to some folks who've signed up first and um, but as you can see, so Five Acres Honey Farm is, um, you know, the name of my apiary, but this says Five Acres Honey Farm West. So uh, what I've announced to um, the folks that have signed up um, on fiveacreshoneyfarm.com for honey updates is that I have a second apiary uh, and I will be doing a video tour of that space um, in the coming weeks. Um, so in Western North Carolina, a few hives that I set up uh, over the winter and they are thriving like crazy. Um, I'm so impressed with, with how they are doing out there, but I don't wanna share too much about that yet because I have a lot to say about it and I'll put that all in a separate video. Um, but as a little sneak peek, I'm just starting to, to bottle and to label all of the mountain honey. All right, this bee bomb is very busy. And the cool thing is that I transplanted one plant from many that I found out in the woods and I put that here last year and this is the result of it and it's you know starting to spread a bit and bumblebees are on it like well past sunset all day long super early as well I was out here at sunrise this morning and it was already uh, very busy so 
you saw in my last update that I've got a hot mess here with the pond. So it's been so hot and you can see the bees are really busy here gathering um, water. So last night I filled it up to what you see here. And this is a work in progress. I will be making many adjustments to it when the heat has passed. Um, but for now, I'm making sure that there's enough water in here. So not only for these little tadpoles that are spinning around, they're so cute, I'm not sure if you could see them, um, but also for the bees. And this is just covered with bees all day long, also past sunset. They're just getting as much water as they can. So um, from what I understand, um, folks who leave like um, little water trays out near the hives that bees will like ignore them. Apparently like they don't look at stuff right near the hives. And I used to keep a dish like 50 feet from the hives, but um, they never touched it. And once I had this set up, which is um, maybe like 200 feet from the hives, they love it. And they're here all day long. Like I said, it's super hot. Um, so they're using this to help cool the hives down. A few things that yeah. I've done out in the hives to help them uh, ventilate and keep a little cooler in this heat is that I always use screened bottom boards and that allows for a lot more airflow. And so uh, if you're not familiar, but bees typically will um, collect all that water that I was just showing you in the pond and they'll fill up some of the, the honeycomb cells with that water and then they'll fan that and as that water evaporates, evaporation of course, as we all learned in school, is a cooling process. So that's their way of creating their uh, air conditioning in a way. With that, having the screen bottom board allows them to have a lot more airflow circulation. And up until uh, the honey harvest, I also, on some of the hives, I use um, basically just the ones that I'm going to harvest from. I use a screened inner cover. Uh, and now I've removed those and I put back a, a solid inner cover, but I make sure that the inner cover, um, that the top uh, cover of the box, and I should probably go grab some props to explain this in a better way, um, that I make sure that that hole is open on the back of the hive so that as they create their airflow, they can create uh, a circulation process a little bit easier. With those tools in place, they, they have what they need to do what they need to do. So one of the things that I wanted to chat about is caging queens, and there are several benefits to this, and I'll show you the different cages that I have and which ones I prefer to use. This one, I do not like using, and I don't think I've ever used it, so I'm actually gonna be um, donating this to another beekeeper friend. Um, I don't like that, let me see if I can get this here. Um, it only opens this far, so if you're trying to grab the queen, you don't want to hurt her. Um, it doesn't give you a lot of opportunity to get her. I also don't like that it's solid because it makes it really hard to see her among all the other bees that you're going to be grabbing around her. So not really a fan of this. Um, in this heat also, I am really leery of using a metal cage with the hives getting so hot. I mean, just think about it. If you had to be in a cage for a few weeks, and it's in this heat, would you prefer to be in a metal cage or a plastic one? I would prefer plastic. So, plastic. Uh, this I'm also going to be uh, donating as well because um, it's solid plastic. So I didn't think of anything when I was buying these. I was like, oh, let me just grab some um, queen cages. And I've gotten them over the years. Let me just move this because my hand is getting tired. Um, so I've just gathered them over the years as I've needed them and as I've learned, the ones that I have, which I don't have them available right now because they're occupied with, with queens in them, they look like this. And these open nice and wide. Look at that nice big mouth. And, um, and so this makes it easier to kind of like guide her in and then you can like slowly close it and then she's in there. And um, you can use these to as a tool to get the queen into a larger cage, which I'll show you or you can leave them in here. Um, and as you're kind of gathering her, you pretty much inadvertently will gather some worker bees. So they'll be her attendants in here. But even if you don't, there's enough space here where the workers can tend to her if they need to. 
So then in between the frames, and I'll, I'll show this between frames in a sec, um, I just, I make enough space where this can just rest. And I can't remember in the past, like what box I've put her in. I feel like I was putting her in a lower box because of how hot it is and I'm only really caging in the summer. Um, but what I've done um, with, the, with my current hive setup is I have one queen in the top box and, um, and then I have another queen in the bottom box and then I have another one in like the middle of, um, of the, uh, the colony. So I've got a, quite a variation and um, you know making sure that uh, there's enough space so that uh, the, the bees can get to the cells on either side then they can also get to her and that these the, the tops of um, the clip aren't going to be um, moved around by the by the box on top so it'll be just resting very gently in there. So in in regards to the other cage I referenced um, you could use this like I said scoop her up and then guide her which I have done once before <laughs> into this like deluxe queen cage so I mean if you're again if you're thinking about if you had to be in a cage for a few weeks in the heat of the summer you know having all this space to walk around um that might be really nice plus you know you've just got like a little you know grating here of the of the uh the hardware cloth and then you've got the wood frame so very um you know similar to the materials that they're already accustomed to because the bottom board um, is made out of this same type of um hardware cloth um my husband let me see if i can grab this because i don't have my um my tripod for the camera my husband had a bolt that like perfectly fits in this spot so i just keep this bolted but if you were introducing a new queen you could use this cage and you would put a piece of candy in here that they would slowly chew through and then she would um, emerge from from there but you're supposed to get the queen in this hole so I did that two summers ago um, and I felt very accomplished when I got her in there um, and then you, you can also get you know worker bees in there with her too um, I have so many hives right now so I'm just trying to do what I can so I'm using the little plastic clips um, I have one more queen that I need to cage so depending how I feel in the heat and how cooperative the hive is being I have been amazed they have been so gentle all of them like I can't believe how how chill they are all right I came inside to demonstrate a little bit of this so if I had the queen in here uh, a great way of getting her into the larger cage is then you would just hold it over the the hole here and then just open it and so she has nowhere else to go um, except down so it seems pretty simple but you know when you've got your gloves on and the propolis is sticking to everything and it's super hot out it can be a lot more challenging all right I came down to my bee room because I wanted to show you what the queen cage looks like between the frames when it's in a box however I've learned I'm out of equipment and by equipment I mean I have frames but I don't have any more boxes uh, and that's okay because most of the frames that I have are just um, a, just a wax foundation and we're past the season where the bees are going to be building any comb so I wouldn't really be putting anything on the hives at this point and they all have plenty of space right now so at this point in the sum as, as the summer is starting um, I'm actually going to be looking for opportunities to trim down their space because small hive beetle pressure is going to get stronger and you really want to have as much coverage on the frames as possible. Instead, I've got the rest of my frames hanging out here and I'll show you how it looks like with them. If you can use your imagination and these frames were in a box in the hive, uh, what I've been doing is I've been leaving enough space where this queen cage hangs out and of course like right now these are just frames with foundations so like the comb isn't built out but even if it was there's enough room for workers to get between the comb and attend to the queen on both sides and it also has enough space here where it's just resting on these frames and you know they're in here pretty pretty firm when they're in the colony um and the you know every, the propolis is kind of keeping everything together um, and that way, like if there are frames, like right now, they're just balancing here, but if there are frames resting on top, 
it's not going to like open this cage. If anything, it's actually gonna make things um, tighter in there. So what I need to keep an eye out for is when I, for some of the hives where I have this cage on like a lower box, I need to make sure when I'm lifting the box above it that I'm not going to just like put that down and crush her. So I'm going to have to be extra careful to keep an eye on like where the cage is because who knows if like they're building comb down and it gets stuck to this and then as I lift the, the box it's gonna go with it. So that's the only thing and, and at this point for the queens that are caged I'm not planning on opening those hives for two weeks. Um, you know, I, I don't need to check them for any swarming. Um, they have plenty of food right now and they have plenty of space. So they have everything they need. And then in two weeks I'll go in and I just will, oops, <laughs> in any case, I'll just take it and then I just release her and uh, she'll just go back to doing everything that uh, her royal duties entail. Um, so what I've been doing is I've had um, the clear plastic ones of these and I've just been putting them in. Um, the idea here is that uh, the queens will be in these cages for two weeks, and uh, obviously she's in here, so they're not concerned about like making a new queen because they have her pheromones around, they can access her, uh, but she's not laying. So right now we're going into, um, you know, it's mid-June here, um, ideally, a lot of mite treatments are done in July so that when the population starts to boom um, late summer and they're trying to get their population up for the fall and winter, that you're not going to have um, a fatal mite population um, with diseases and, um, you know, deformed wing virus and, um, and other um, development uh, issues where bees may not be able to forage as much. Um, you might have, you know, whether it's even not to form wing virus, the mites could be feeding on the larva so much that the bees aren't forming in a way that they'll be healthy enough to actually fly and bring back um, food. So you're, if you're not somehow helping the bees to manage those mites, um, you're creating a really challenging situation for them and a very uncomfortable one, pretty painful one. So the idea here is that there is a brood break. So for two weeks, she can't lay. So during those two weeks, she's in her cage. And again, my hand is getting tired without my tripod. Um, she's in her cage, she is hanging out. They're still feeding her, everything's great. Like the eggs that she just laid right before I caged her, um, those will be capped at around day seven or eight and then um, they will um, emerge at day 21. So three weeks from today, um, the, the last of the, the, um, the brood will have emerged and there won't be any more capped brood. So if you're not familiar with Varroa mites, um, the Varroa mite will enter the larva cell just before it's capped. There are some um, pheromones given off that attract it in there at that time. So one Varroa mite, when it goes into the cell, will produce seven mites. So when that bee comes out, seven more mites will be in the colony. So if you have a few mites in your colony and you're like, oh, no big deal. Well, you know, in 21 days, <laughs> you're, you've got, you, you know, and then the cycle of an egg. So I guess like, I guess at day seven or day seven or eight when it's capped, that's when the mite goes in. So then two weeks later, you'll have um, seven times as more problems. So, with that, that at least this brood break, that's that many mites that can't reproduce. So that alone is helping the colony. Two weeks, she's in her cage, and I and then I'll let her out. So at the three week mark, so three weeks from first caging her, is when um, I will do an oxalic acid vaporization treatment. So that means um, the um, the treatment is uh, chemical free. Oxalic acid is an organic compound. And, um, and so there'll be no capped brood in the hive at the time of the treatment, which is when you can do the most effective treatment with an oxalic acid vaporization treatment. Um, so this is gonna be a great way to, one, prevent the mites from just um, breeding uh, at the rate that they were, and two, it's going to knock down the population. It will, it will kill and remove any mites that are in the colony. So this way, as the population of the bees um, increases with the fall, 
they're not going to have as many mites to deal with as they would have if I, if I didn't go to these measures. Um, so I hope that explains things a little bit there. That's my plan for these hives for the summer. Curious what you're doing with your mite management um, in the summer and, and throughout the year. So please let me know. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to me at this time of the year with how much the bees need with, um, with mite management and giving them more space. And um, it just feels like everything needs attention, like the garden needs attention, um, the bees need attention, all the animals, everything's just in this kind of like flowing state of abundance uh, that it's also honey harvest season so that you're actually like getting rewarded this one time of year. Um, and it's a nice reminder that this is, you know, this is a nice little treat for, for all the hard work. Uh, but I would love to know what kind of chemical free uh, mite control uh, practices that you have. I know there are many others out there um, and some others that um, that I've attempted that I uh, like to share about as well. Um, but please let me know in the comments, like subscribe and all that jazz and uh, we'll chat next time.